media narrowing, uh, where did you have, uh, show the results of those three different nerve stimulations? Okay, I didn't make that very quick, clear in the quick presentation. A patient will be stimulated at all three nerve locations at once. So a patient comes in, they will have both all three, an herbs, a radial, and a median um, stimulating. Those trains of pulses are not occurring at exactly the same time because that can block the signal to the brain, and they're off by just fractions of milliseconds. But you're receiving all three stimulation while you're being trained. Thank you. For, for someone who did that up to 900, 60 movement cycles that you talked about. A naive question, how much time are we talking okay. about in a day did that take? Okay. Five minutes, five hours? The, um, it's important to also make um, everyone, I can talk about the microphone. The, um, it's been shown in those preliminary studies as well with the subacute and the severe or the moderate to mild population, you need about an hour and 40 minutes or, or an hour and 40 minutes or 100 minutes of nerve stimulation in order to induce neuroplastic changes. And so a patient, no matter what group they were in, got in 100 minutes of stimulation, even if you got it before or during the training. Therefore, so does that answer your question? But in terms of about an hour and two hours, an hour and 40 minutes. And, um, and you know, I'm just thinking, this is a, a, a fascinating topic, and it's like a few other therapies that are fascinating that help chronic stroke patients or even acute translate that into the situation we're in now in healthcare of who gets to have anyone treating them for two hours consecutively. I was just sort of thinking ahead, what if I wanted to do this on my patients? Right. It's a fascinating, you know. It would take about an hour and 40 minutes. Or so. <laughs> What was the timing of your assessment compared to the intervention, and did you have any long-term follow-up? The, um, the, within one week pre and one week post, some patients were evaluated on the same day as baseline or post, and we weren't able to do one-month follow-up due to finances and different things. What were your stroke impact scale findings? The stroke impacts, the cysts, the, <clears throat> we haven't analyzed those as much, but generally the trend follows consistently with the Fugelmeyer. It doesn't follow it as nicely as we'd like it to, but um, we haven't done as much analysis with that just yet. Uh, uh, one question, is there any statistical analysis of uh, the, the, the means? In the what, what, I can show, what I can say is nothing has reached significance yet. Again, we're all, we need an N of 60 and we're only at 24. The closest that we've seen is with the, before, the below and during group as compared to the, the, bef the below and before group, we have a p-value of 0 .006, so we're really close, and that's as much as I can say. Have you noticed or have your patients reported any subjective change in their tone? Absolutely. That's one. What I'm showing here is all motor changes, and even more so than that, again, is complete reduced tone. Every person that was in this study improved, and a lot of that would have been in the tone. P patients also reported the tingling that they haven't had in years. You know, as the brain relearns it's that the, uh, the arm and the hand exist, a lot of the patients, my hand tingles. My arm tingles. What's going on here? And we would see, like, a patient would come in with a toe that's, Super extended in the prep, like through the arm training, their foot got better as well. That's so interesting. And, and did you just use single TMS rather than pair pulse or other? Yes, we only did single single pulse TMS. Um, and we also, yeah, so no paired pulse or RTMS. Let's move to the next poster. Thank you very much, Cameron. Thank you.